Hello. Over the past few weeks, I've posted a few videos about using an app called Touch OSC to gain control over MIDI CC and global settings for the Moog Matriarch. In this video, we'll be diving into the dreaded MIDI SysX. We'll take a closer look at Touch OSC and even get into a tiny bit of scripting. Some of the topics I talk about in this video are a bit complicated, but the good news is, if you learn how to use this app, it really opens up a ton of possibilities. I've already showed you how it can work with the Moog Matriarch, but you can of course use this to control any synth which accepts MIDI CC and SysX, like the uh, Moog Mother 32. Or if you have a desktop synth like this little Dave Smith Tetra, you can set up a template so you can have button per function control. or daisy chain a couple of synths together and create macro controls to control both of the synths at the same time. Or if you have an audio interface or effects processor that accepts MIDI control, you can build a performance mixer or control your effects or MIDI enabled modules in real time. You can have physical control over your plugins in real time in your DAW. Or, if you have some old phones lying around, why not convert them to Wi-Fi enabled mixers for individual headphone mixes for multiple musicians? Really, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this app and it can really improve your workflow. I've had a lot of fun learning how to use it over the past few months. The rest of this video, I'll use the Moog Matriarch again to demonstrate how all this works. But between this video and the last one, there should be enough information for you to be able to edit or create your own Touch OSC templates for any MIDI CC or SysX device. A note about Touch OSC, at the time of making this video, there's still no support for 14-bit or NRPN messages, but according to the Hexler website, this is in the works, so that's great news. That'll open the door for even more possibilities. There's an index in the description and links to my templates, and some files I talk about in this video will be in the description as well. Let's get to it. Okay, let's talk SysX. SysX stands for System Exclusive Message. SysX is used to change settings in a synth that cannot be accessed by other means. Uh, SysX messages are in hexadecimal format. Hexadecimal, or sometimes just hex, is a 16 base numbering system. We're used to a um, 10 base numbering system, which is called decimal. There are tons of videos out there explaining hexadecimal by people that are much more qualified to explain it than I am. So if you're confused, I'd check some of those out. I'll just do a quick explanation here. So um, it should cover what we need at least. So like I said, we're used to a decimal or 10 base system. So numbers go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, etc., etc. Now in hexadecimal or 16 base, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But instead of 10, we've got an A. Then 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, 15 is F. So 16 itself is actually written as 10 in hexadecimal. 17 is written as 11. So it's easy enough if we're dealing with small values like one to 16, for instance, but once you get into higher integers, Converting them to hex can be a bit of a pain. You have to divide by 16 and carry remainders again. And I'm not a mathematician, so I'm not going to get into that. It's been almost 40 years since I've taken a math class. And luckily, we're in the 21st century now. You can find converters on pretty much any good calculator. There's tons of simple converters online. 
most synths will have a table with physics values at the back of the manual, so uh, let's take a look at the matriarchs. Moog, as usual, not only has the info we need, but a brief explanation. We've got the message template at the top here, as well as the, the um, parameter IDs and values in a table below. And as usual, Moog explains this all fairly well, that is, if you already know how SysX works. We've got our message template at the top. That's the F0041723 parameter ID value MSB blah blah blah. The first thing to note is that these numbers are already in hex format, but the parameter IDs are in decimal. So that means eventually we're going to have to be doing some decimal to hexadecimal conversions. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at SysX messages. The first second and last pair of digits are required by all SysX messages. The F0 and F7 can be thought of as brackets which enclose the message so the synth recognize it as SysX. Again, every SysX message regardless of manufacturer requires those two digit pairs. The rest of the code in general is pretty much left up to the manufacturer themselves, but most of manufacturers use the second pair in this case the 04 as a manufacturer ID. So in this case, all Moog synths are gonna have a manufacturer ID of 04. The manufacturer ID and a few of the other parameters, as you'll see, are included in SysX messages to make sure the correct synth or piece of gear receives the message you want to send and it doesn't go somewhere else. Sequential circuits manufacturer ID, for instance, is 01, Lexicon is 06, uh, Roland is 65, Yamaha is 67, but again you have to make sure when you're reading your manual that those numbers are listed as hexadecimal and not decimal, otherwise you're going to have to convert it. So Roland for instance, which is 65, the hex code is actually 41. Yeah, I know it's a bit confusing, but no big deal once you get the hang of it. Okay, back to our message. The uh, third digit pair, the 17 in this case, is the device ID. So Matriarch's ID is 17. Again, the idea behind device idea is that it can be changed if you have two of the same synths and want to have them daisy chained. But this is different with Moog, at least with the Matriarch. They use unit ID, which is the last digit pair before the F7, the closing brackets. So this is very important. Any matriarch will have 17 as the third digit pair. But if you're lucky enough to have two matriarchs and want to daisy chain them and send separate SysX messages, you'll need to change the unit ID of one of these synths. This can be done via SysX, of course, or via the global settings, but most of us should just leave this at its default, which is zero. If you do have a second matriarch, then alter the last digit before the closing bracket to reflect that. Okay, next up we have the model ID, which for the matriarch is 23. This number, again, is manufacturer specific. Some manufacturers will alter this number for different synths, some don't. Moog seems to keep this number consistent for the matriarch and the grandmother at least. So if you're using a grandmother, this value is also going to be 23, although the device ID for the grandmother is 16. I don't own a grandmother, but I've been asked by a bunch of people already how to use this template with a grandmother, so I'll do some grandmother examples later, but sorry, I'm not going to build a full template. But you should be able to easily do this yourself after watching this video, or you can probably just simply edit my matriarch template for use with the grandmother. Actually, maybe I will do that. Well, that's a lot of work. We'll see. Okay, so we've covered the basics of our template. So for any SysX message going to the matriarch, we're going to need F0041723, bunch of parameters, and 0F7. Okay, so now let's take a look at the good stuff. The digits between the 23 and the unit ID. Those are the values that are going to change how our synth behaves. So let's say we want to control round robin mode. In the manual, we see the parameter ID for this is 67. Okay, here's the pain in the butt part. Moog has listed all parameter IDs in decimal format, but we're using hexadecimal, so we can't just type in 67, it won't work. We have to convert that to hex first. So 67 in hex is 43. So now our code's gonna look like this. F0041723, 43, bunch of other stuff, 00F7. 
Next up, Moog tells us we need an MSB and an LSB value. MSB stands for most significant bit. LSB stands for least significant bit. Here's a simple explanation of that. In MIDI, we have 128 possible values, 0 to 127. But there are a lot more numbers than 128. That's not a good way of explaining it. So let's use a filter as an example. If you want a smooth filter sweep, for instance, but divided the range of the filter into 128 different steps, you'd hear the filter jump from value to value. It would not be smooth modulation. So MSB and LSB are used to add more values when needed. Basically, the synth looks at MSB and LSB values and combines them and uses the MSB as an offset of the LSB. It's how 14-bit MIDI and NRPN works. Um, 16,384 values are now possible, which is 128 times 128. Most Moog synths can send and receive 14-bit or NRPN, but for static values like on and off, for instance, we don't need to worry about that at all. We just need two values. So because there are less than 128 parameters on the matriarch, our MSB will always be zero, or double zero, sorry, and our LSB will be the parameter value we want to send to the synth. In most cases, this will be zero for off, one for on, but there are a few parameters that will need higher LSB values, and round robin is one of those because we have three different states, off, on, and on with reset. So on in this case is zero, two, on with reset is zero, one, and off is double zero. So now our code looks like this. F0, 04, 17, 23, 43, double zero is our MSB, 02 is our LSB, which is turning uh, round robin mode on. And then our closing bracket F7. Now that's pretty much it. Moog tells us in the manual that we need eight pairs of double zeros after our LSB value, so let's add those in. So now we've got F0, 0, 4, 17, 23, 43, double zero, 0, 02, double zero, 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 F7. And we're done. So let's program in a simple button in Touch OSC. I'm just going to start from scratch so we can have a good idea of how this works. Then it should be easy for you to uh, alter my template or build your own for a different synth, whatever you want to do. So we'll start by just simply adding a button. Then I'm going to scroll over to the MIDI messages section. I'll get rid of this OSC message again. We don't need that. And we're going to change the type of message from control change or CC to system exclusive message, which as we know is SysX. Now a little pane at the bottom automatically opens and we can see that uh, Touch OSC wants this in hexadecimal format because we've got our opening and closing brackets, or F0 and an F7. Okay, and here's some good news for you. I've already converted most of the SysX messages, not all of them, but most of them, the ones I wanted to use at least, to hexadecimal and I've put them in an Excel file. I'll share that on my website so you don't need to go through all that conversion, but now at least you know how to do it so you can do this on a grandmother or sub-37 or whichever synth you want. Or of course the parameters on the matriarch I haven't done. So I'm just going to copy our round robin mode on into the little pane. And let's use a protocol, the MIDI monitor, to make sure we're getting the correct message. Looks good. But wait, of course, there's more. If you use the scripting pane in Touch OSC, and I did for a few of the parameters, especially the ones using radio buttons and grids to make sure the different buttons sent the values I wanted, you'll need to enter the values in another format. Now, I'm not going to go into Lua pretty much at all. That's the coding language used by Touch OSC, mainly because I only have a vague grasp of it. And I'm okay with MIDI and know a little bit about synthesis, but I'm definitely not a computer programmer by any means. So please don't ask any Lua or coding questions. I probably will not know the answer. I figured most of this out by trial and error and by following examples I found on GitHub. There's a bunch of great templates already there. Okay, but the weird thing about Lua is it seems to want the opening and closing brackets in hexadecimal, written as 0x0, that sort of thing which is just another way of writing F0. Uh, but the rest is in decimal format. 
But again, the good news is I've already converted all the Sysx hex codes for touch OSC scripting in the Excel file as well. So let's do a real quick example anyway, in case you want to try this on another synth. Might as well stick with round robin. Actually, before we get into scripting, let's just make sure it works. So we'll start with another button again. And we'll change the type of message to um, uh, system exclusive. And I'm going to change the trigger to just rise so it only sends one message. And I'll get rid of the OSC message. Now we just got to type in our Sysx message, which we know is F0047234300002. Whole bunch of zeros. And then F7. Now you can just copy this from my Excel file if you want. Let's finish typing this in. And then we'll go into um, play mode and try it. Great, it worked. Okay, but we're going to need another button if we want to turn it off. We could just add another button with a Sysx off message, but the state of the button won't update if we do that. We need exclusive buttons, ones that turn on and off with the different presses. So we're going to use radio buttons or grids to do that. And to get those to work, like I said, we need to use script. So let's start by adding a radio button. Going to get rid of the OSC message, and we're going to get rid of the MIDI message. Round Robin has three parameters, so I'm going to go up into the radio menu and change the number of steps to three to reflect the amount of parameters. And now it's time to script. Again, I'm not a computer programmer. It's much easier to just copy and paste from a template. That's what I did until I had a better understanding of what's going on. But I'll type the first bit of this in and do my best to explain what's going on. First, we need to identify the different button steps and let Touch OSC know what we want it to do when we press a different button. We do this by typing in local, which means the command applies to the selected button. And then we need to define each step. With radio buttons, the first step is zero. And we need to tell Touch OSC what type of message to send. So we need a MIDI message type. And this is doing an autocomplete for me, so that's nice. And we need to tell it to send a system exclusive message. By the way, all this code is listed in the Touch OSC manual. It's the best place to find out how to do all this. After system exclusive, then we type in the actual message we want it to send. So this part of the script is obviously the most important that you understand because it's the part that you may need to change if you want to edit my template or create your own. But the rest of the script is going to be the same for pretty much everything. So I'll just type in the rest of the script quickly so we can test out the button. And then we'll get back to the important stuff, our actual message. While I'm doing this, uh, let's talk about the opening and closing brackets of our Sysx message. We know the code for those is F0 and F7. In the scripting pane, we have to enter those in hex. And by using a short form, we can generate both the opening bracket and our manufacturer code by typing 0 times x4. Our closing bracket will be 0 times F7. OK, let's define the other two buttons. Copy and paste the code for the first button and change the 0 to numbers 1 and 2 to reflect the different steps of the radio button. And now that the script is complete and I've entered in our opening and closing brackets in hex, we can go into play mode and make sure we're getting the messages we want with a MIDI monitor. And it looks like it worked. All buttons are sending opening brackets with manufacturing codes and closing brackets. So now we need our device ID, which is 17, and our model ID, which is 23. Now, remember from the manual, those numbers are in hex format, but for this code, we need them in decimal, so we need to convert them. I know my head is spinning too. Anyway, 17 is 23, and 23 is 35, so let's enter those. And go back into play mode and make sure it's working. And yes, it looked like it worked. We've got our Moog Sysx template F0041723 with our closing bracket F7. And the good news is the rest of the message is already in decimal format, so we can just type that in straight from the manual. So we type in our parameter ID, which is 67. We already know our MSB is zero, or double zero. And our LSB, or parameter value, is also going to be double zero. Then we just fill in the rest of the double zeros. Remember, there's eight pairs. I'll just quickly type those in. OK, before I copy this to the other buttons, let's just one more time go into play mode and double check that this is working. And there it is, victory. 
OK, I'll just quickly copy this code to the other buttons. And now I need to change the LSB values to reflect the parameters we want. Two for on, one for on with um, reset. Let's try it out. And it's working. Awesome. Let's turn it off. Perfect. All right, so that concludes my crash course in Touch OSC. Hopefully that gives you enough information so that you can edit or create your own templates. Thanks for watching.